hundreds of thousands of pounds of thrust, controlled, restrained, contained by strong metal into the lapping up. One of the most challenging obstacles to rocket and missile progress is the requirement for greater reliability and dependability in rocket motor cases, a problem which has no easy solution. Yet through exhaustive testing, the nature and proportions of the problem have been defined and a solution indicated. Simply stated, we have a thin-walled, high-strength pressure vessel of minimum weight. The basic shape of the component, along with great size, demands sectional construction, yet without loss of strength. A highly stressed structure with cross-sections paired to the minimum, placing a premium on strength, integrity, and uniformity of the metal. Several test vessels were built to determine the parameters of the problem. The solution required a new concept in material engineering and fabrication. The first vessel was of conventional construction with formed closures and a sheet steel body cylinder rolled and welded longitudinally, subjected to hydrostatic pressure. Failure occurred in the long weld at an equivalent fiber stress well below the yield point of the metal. Vessel number two, fabricated with the same formed closures, but since stress across a girth weld is only half the stress developed across a longitudinal weld, the body cylinder was a seamless rolled ring, eliminating the weld in the highly stressed and vulnerable longitudinal position. Under testing, this vessel failed at the outlet weld. The explanation for failure at this point is simple enough, considering the high concentration of stress at the outlet well. On the other hand, suppose the outlets were an integral part of the closure. Longer radius, stress distributed over a greater cross-section, with grain flow favorably disposed to resist the stresses applied. Accordingly, vessel number three had a body of seamless rolled ring girth welded to closed die forge closures with integral extruded outlet. And with this vessel, failure occurred at a stress well beyond that to which the metal had been treated, taking place at a pinpoint porosity in the girth weld. Engineering had achieved the full potential of the metal. Thus, after extensive and costly research, a formal concept was evolved. Die forge closures with integral outlets providing desirable flow line configuration. Body of long thin wall seamless rolled rings eliminating longitudinal wells. All parts of wrought metal for maximum dependability and performance. But to provide assurance for such a concept, you have to have something very special in the way of steel. No ordinary run of the mill metal will do. Steel analysis must permit heat treatment to extremely high strength weight ratios while retaining great fracture toughness. In addition to proper analysis, it is essential to use steel from an ingot with a consistently high degree of uniformity and cleanliness. To meet this requirement, steel produced by the vacuum consumable electrode remelt process was used. This method restricts the amount of molten metal and permits controlled, rapid, progressive solidification. The result is an ingot with fine grain size and a high degree of freedom from segregates and other inherent deficiencies of air melt static cast ingots. Macro etched test specimens demonstrate the clean, uniform structure characteristics of billets converted from ingots produced by the vacuum consumable remelt process. This magnetic step-down test specimen from material produced without the benefit of vacuum remelting reveals indications of non-metallic inclusions encountered in static cast materials. Freedom from such detrimental inclusions assures the predictable performance of highly stressed rocket motor components. The use of a forging billet is vital. For the billet lends itself more than other stock shapes to complex sectioning for thorough verification of metal quality 
by a variety of testing procedures and permits discarding undesirable sections. To qualify the metal for this job, billets are subjected to ultrasonic inspection for internal structure and are dye penetrant tested for surface quality. Then magnetic particle step down, macro etch, and micro cleanliness tests, together with chemical and spectrographic verification of analysis. And naturally, the entire gamut of tests for mechanical properties. After testing to assure the ultimate in metallurgical integrity, the forging job begins with a steel billet of matchless pedigree, a concept plus a material to meet the demands of the application. But the concept would be no more than a page in a textbook without the know-how of an organization skilled through years of pioneering experience in translating concepts to reality in wrought metal. Starting with a multiple of the billet, the metal is hot worked under the hammer in several stages. First, upset to roughly cubical proportions with grain flow disposed outward from the central axis. Then, the cube is placed on its side and flattened in a cross-forging operation. Finally, the piece is rough blocked, further refining the grain and distributing the metal. Thus, the block shape as it goes under one of the shop's 5,000 ton presses has already been extensively worked for improved metal quality and grain flow. Cross-forging has imparted desirable qualities which could not be equal by conventional flat stock. Now under quiet, irresistible pressure, a dome is preformed. Not an unusual shape, but because of the cross-forging process, the upsetting and blocking that preceded the forming operation, the metal has been properly distributed and grain configuration controlled to afford favorable characteristics of strength and ductility. And now, the form shape is ready for final forging under the 125,000 meter kilogram counterblow hammer. This unique tool is the center of a massive complex of supporting equipment. It's not exaggerating to say that when rockets fly dependably, take off reliably, this tool will have helped to launch them. These rams and dies, this power and capability, realized through private initiative and unsubsidized investment, are essential components of the total weapon system. Now a body section, an extruded cylindrical blank produced at another implant site from the same highly qualified steel is placed in a giant ring roll machine, also designed, produced and directed by Laddish to make the engineer's creations come true in wrought metal. It's a unique tool that can roll out seamless rings up to 24 feet in diameter with face heights to six feet weighing as much as 170,000 pounds. The wall grows thinner, OD larger and larger, and large enough 
a long, thin wall, seamless body cylinder. Take it away. Next, the aft closure. Again, a cross-forged, preformed piece placed in position in the giant counterblow hammer. A hammer designed to accept dies up to 200 inches long or 96 inches in diameter. It's a tool with the necessary power to handle this job. The closed impression die forging of a large aft closure with multiple extruded outlets. Forging completed. Take the piece away for heat treatment and then to join the other components in the machine shop. Target machining is a service and an economy to the customer. It simplifies inspection, speeds production setup in the customer's plant, and relieves his precision equipment of rough machine work. Here, after target machining, are the components ready for speedy material and diagnostic inspection in critical areas. All of them are tangible evidence of a fundamental of progress, the interdependence of material, engineering, and manufacture. For in the last analysis, it's the idea, the imagination, the pioneering mind, and the courage to take heavy risks that open up the future. What first launches any project beyond today's boundaries is the willingness to question conventional practices, the ability to evolve new concepts, and the equipment and know-how to transform theory into dependable reality.